Nowhere in the United States is there a town more connected to America's Old West. At first glance, it's like taking a step back in time. The streets, the buildings, and train stations look like something from a Hollywood movie set. <laughs> However, this is no Western recreation. Virginia City, Nevada is a place deeply rooted in a history that dates back more than 150 years during the settlement of America's vast frontier. Legendary author Mark Twain began his writing career here and described the mining town. Flush with money, booze, sex, gambling, corruption, and murder, along with a few ghost stories. As a no holds bar place with so many gripping tales to tell, we are going to stake our claim to this rough and tumble slice of the Old West. Virginia City began to develop as a boom town in 1859 after the discovery of huge silver and gold deposits that would transform the small settlement into one of the wealthiest places in the country and propel the territory of Nevada into statehood. Located east of Lake Tahoe, Virginia City sets on the side of a mountain that was rich in mineral deposits, one of the biggest called the Comstock Lode. Thousands of fortune seekers arrived in Virginia City, many of them recent immigrants from other countries. I wanna see a brand new country. One I ain't never seen before. Head out west toward milk and honey. Hotels and other businesses sprang up almost overnight to accommodate the surge in population. Virginia City has worked over the years to maintain those buildings along with the plywood sidewalks. Many of the saloons are still open. Fixtures and decor in the saloons date back to the 1800s. And other types of merchants fill out the remaining stores and structures. This four-story wooden school is the last one of its type left in the United States. Virginia City built its own opera house with ambitions to rival San Francisco as the cultural capital of the West. Samuel Clemens aimed to ride Virginia City's wave of prosperity to greater prestige as well when he arrived here from Missouri and changed his name to Mark Twain. The young writer took a job as a reporter at a local newspaper. It was the first time he used Mark Twain as his pen name. His colorful descriptions of life in booming Virginia City and the Old West earned him a national reputation with so much more yet to come. Twain also wrote about the hazardous conditions in the mines. Some have been reinforced and are open to the public. The Ponderosa Saloon is built right into the mountain and offers a guided tour of the mine shafts. By 1876, Nevada produced over half of all the precious metals in the United States. There's even a memorial to the caged canaries miners would take with them to warn of any buildup of dangerous gases. The tools and equipment needed to get the dangerous job of mining done are on display at the Way It Was Museum. This includes a mining cart and parts of a mining shaft. These early slot machines reveal the city's long connection to gambling. A vast and complicated network of underground mining tunnels was dug in and around Virginia City. Miners worked 12 to 16 hours a day, six days a week, hauling buckets of dirt and moving boulders. They had to deal with severe heat, underground flooding, tunnel collapses, explosive charges, and accidents. Scores of miners died. Many others were injured. Now I see all these eggs and make you 
grow. Those miners who perished were most likely laid to rest at Virginia City's hillside cemeteries. The tombstones and their inscriptions are historical markers and memorials to those who brought their hopes and hard work to this region of Nevada. Few of the adults buried here were born in the United States, reflecting the scope of the immigration and the diverse cultural makeup of Virginia City in the mid-1800s. Many of the immigrants were Christians. St. Mary's Catholic Church was dedicated in 1870 and has been rebuilt and renovated over the years. The size and opulence of the church reflected the wealth of Virginia City at the time. The church is open to the public and there's a museum in the basement. Nearby is St. Paul's Episcopal Church, founded in 1861. The architecture is a rare example in the United States of Gothic-style wood construction. The church was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1961. Not included in Virginia City's official record are all the ghost stories, which persist to this day and have become one of the former mining town's biggest attractions. Almost every establishment in town is attached to some type of supernatural account. These purported ghost sightings have created a cottage industry of tours and TV shows, as Virginia City is believed to be one of the most spooked sites in the country. The old Washoe Club is the epicenter for many of these tall tales. Opened in 1875 as an exclusive bar called the Millionaire's Club, the three-story brick building had a dramatic real-life history. An explosion killed 12 people in 1873, several suicides, murders, missing prostitutes, and bodies stored in a freezer called a crypt all could account for the sense of spirits in the Washoe Club. Okay, so I'm making my way through the house alone. And this is a back area where they used to sneak in the prostitutes so no one would see them. And apparently there's a couple uh, ghosts of prostitutes around here. So far I've not had any sightings or heard anything, but um, it is still kind of creepy. Virginia City's boom times only lasted about 20 years. As the gold and silver mining deposits dried up, its population plunged from more than 25,000 to several hundred. Many of Virginia City's current residents are trying to keep the look and feel of that long-gone era fresh in the minds of visitors today. We want to make sure that history stays alive and that people that come to Virginia City know that there was a military presence here during the 19th century. Rounding out any visit to Virginia City must include a stop or two for the wild horses that roam this area of western Nevada. The Virginia Range is home to approximately 2,000 wild horses, including Mustangs. Treat them with respect and care, even when they are crossing roads, as these horses are protected by federal and state law. These majestic animals are one of the last remaining symbols of the Wild West. Maybe I was young.